So today I'd like to show you this model of another early medieval building that I made. And this one's of the excavations at Gorba High Pasture, or Ribblehead, up near Ingleborough. So this is an aerial image of the remains today. As you can see, there's a long structure up here. And then a small wall linking it to this small building here. And they're actually much more visible on the ground. There are actually other walls linking it to a final structure down the bottom here. Now, when they excavated it, they actually found that in this one, this is very poorly built, very ramshackle. It's kind of built on the limestone pavement, which you can't really see from the aerial view. But it uses some of the faults in the limestone as parts of the wall. And there was evidence for perhaps some industrial activity, things like smithing going on in this building. There remains of a quern and lots of grain and things in here. So I think it's fair to interpret this as a store, perhaps a cookhouse of some sort. Um, you know, maybe for grinding the bread, baking and other storage. And then this, of course, is the main domestic dwelling. It does, however, have a partition halfway across. Um, so it's likely that this building was divided into two bits. So let's have a look at how I then interpreted that in the model. So the first thing you notice is I haven't got the cookhouse, which would be here. Um, and I haven't got the smithy or whatever it is down in the bottom corner. These are already quite big models. I have multiple of them, so it becomes very difficult. I could build it on a smaller scale, but then I lose some of the detail. So there's always compromises that have to be made, and that was one here. I couldn't make the entire farmstead because it would be about six times the size of this one here. So I went with this single structure. As you can see, it's on the end of the edge of the limestone pavement, which it is. I've got a little bit of the, the bank and boundary walls, which would run around the, the sort of farmyard itself. And I created a bit of a domestic scene here with some of these short cattle, as would have been prevalent in the period. Um, a couple of little kids running along the tops of the bank walls, and then a, a man who's clearly just been in the cookhouse or butchering something, um, and a dog very interested in that. Um, and then an older lady watching the kids and several chickens and things like that around the place too. The fun bit is the roof comes off, so we can actually have a look inside the structure itself. So here we have the partition found during excavation, and this bit I've reconstructed as an animal buyer, which is what these upland structures mostly seem to be. Half of them will be dedicated to the animals. And then in this end here, we have the remainder of the living quarters for the rest of the people. So we've got these low benches and a half. These would serve as beds as well. The remainder of the family here having a bit of an argument and some other bits of furniture. Now, likely it was full of a lot more things than this, but this starts to flash out for people the idea of what these structures look like inside and how they may have functioned and how the living area isn't that much different to those of urban settings.